Good afternoon, folks. So today we're going to talk about Apache Kylin. Uh, and this is the only slide we're going to do self-promotion on. So, uh, and I think it was asked, well, we are asked to put this there. So my name is Devashi Saha. I run a team called eBay Cloud Services at eBay, where we provide our developers the internal cloud for platforms, infrastructure, and data uh, that every developer, every application uses on, on eBay. Uh, and our team uh, developed this project called Apache Kylin, and we're going to talk about that today, uh, and you'll see how it fits in the whole ecosystem. And I have with me you know, Luke Khan, who is the senior product manager and one of the founding members of Kylin, and he's going to talk about uh, the technical details as well. Let me first ask you, how many of you are aware of Kylin? OK, almost 50 percent. Good, good. Uh, how many of, of you use or think are, you, are thinking of Kylin in conjunction of BI? Okay. So when Kylin came out, there were a lot of uh, press. You know, we never talked about it uh, by ourselves. A lot of press came out, and then the, the, one of them said, "It's another SQL on Hadoop." Kylin is not SQL on Hadoop. OK? Kylin is OLAP on Hadoop. And to the best of my knowledge, this is the only open source OLAP on Hadoop that, that's, that's available in the, in the world, in the planet. And we'll talk about uh, our design motivations and why we built that. It was built on day zero to do petabyte scale OLAP on tens of billions of rows. Other commercial offerings start with like millions of rows and they try to scale out to billions of rows. And, they, and they're never successful. And, and we wanted right to be into the Hadoop ecosystem. So we're going to talk about that. So this is our agenda today. We're going to talk about Kylin, the feature highlights, the te technology underneath, the roadmap, and we're going to open up for Q&A. So Kylin, you can, you, you can call it Kylin or Kilin or Chilin, right? In, in Chinese, it's Chilin. Uh, it is our extreme OLAP engine for big data. It's an open source distributed analytics engine that eBay contributed. It's an Apache incubated project that provides pure ANSI SQL on multidimensional analysis and OLAP on Hadoop on extremely, extremely large data sets. So if you have a very small data set, this is going to do it really, really well, but that's not the use case that we, we want to attack. So it was open source only last year on, on uh, October 2014. And uh, it is an Apache incubator project. And we love it to be a top level project. So we need your help to contribute. And already you know, we are seeing a lot of adoption in the community. We have 25 plus uh, committers. Uh, there are production use cases outside of eBay. Of course, there are a lot of production use cases inside eBay. Baidu Map is using it. And there are a lot of evaluations happening with Huawei, Bloomberg Law, uh, Microsoft and Tableau. In fact, when Tableau goes to their customers and they see their data sets residing in Hadoop, they recommend that you, know, you should use Kylin as, possible as, as a possible engine to, to be, to be uh, back-ended uh, for, for Tableau. So our design goals were very simple. 90, 90th percentile queries, query times less than a few seconds. Uh, it's five seconds now for huge data sets, but we wanted to you know, come down even, even more. And if you see the, the number of raw, Rows that we have is 28 billions of rows, and primarily on the behavioral data, all the click stream that eBay collects. Okay, so there's, a, there's billions every day, and we want to put all of them together, create the dimension and analytics on top, and provide a BI tool on top of that. That's the use case. It's not fully real time, but whatever time it takes for you to create the indices, maybe an hour or so, we have incremental cube builds as well. So that's the delay if you can tolerate that then this is the perfect solution for you to expose to your uh, analysts for the, as a BI use case. So let's talk about the motivation, why we did that. There are lots of SQL and Hadoop solutions uh, on, on, the, on the ecosystem. But really what we want to do is not data warehousing. What we said, there's a lot of BI tools in the world and reports that, and visualization that all of you need on top of the Hadoop ecosystem. If you have data on Hadoop, it makes no sense to take the data out, build the cube somewhere else, and surface that on BI. It doesn't make sense. And when we looked across the board, there was no tool, there was no technology which created this petabyte scale OLAP uh, solution. And at eBay, and like many of you have, there are lots of BI applications 
And all of you probably would take the data out to some cube ad, uh, engine, or inside Tableau, or SQL, uh, Excel, SQL Server, Oracle, whatever it may be. And that, that transfer for billions of records is just useless. The data can be right there in Hadoop, and you could query right there in Hadoop. So really, if it's a small data set, you know, all these group by aggregate sum count functions are easy to do. You have materialized views. But what if you have billions of records? And that's the sweet spot. You will see what we did. We took a lot of research that was done over this last you know, 20, 30 years, and we applied all of these technologies in the, in the Hadoop uh, OLAP engine to build this compressed space that you can query in, in seconds. That's, if you, uh, we'll talk about the, how the cuboid technology is used. It's not a new technology. But if you wanted to keep all of it, you're going to get petabytes of data. You cannot do that. So smart compression, smart pruning, smart uh, algorithms, the use of algorithms is what this, this project does, and provides that in a fully ANSI SQL compliant manner that you can plug any of your BI, existing BI tools. So really, the motivation was that you know, if you have petabytes of data, you cannot, cannot use an OLAP engine on top. You have to either subset your data, you have to you know, sample your data, or create non-real-time aspects of the data to, to create a you know, BI engine on top of that. And that was the motivation, how we can have data in the Hadoop and provide all of our analytics BI solutions to be backended by Hadoop. So really, this is the balance between the space and time. The, the technology is what we, what's, it's, it's a old technology, it's not new. Uh, it's about, if you have all these dimensions, so okay, let's back up a little bit. Data, right, is, has, it has dimensions and metrics, very simple. All you need to do is aggregate across different dimensions, group by, and then have this function, sum, max, average, that you create on these huge data sets. And this is the concept of materialized views. So if you see, look at this, look at this uh, with the cuboid graph, what on the bottom le most node, if you, we keep all the raw individual elements of the data, so four dimensions. Now, if we could aggregate all the different dimensions as we scale up, then when you query, you can go to each of the nodes. When you say group by, you know, let's say the last, uh, the f uh, you know, the fifth, all milk, star, star, star. You go to that node, those are already pre-aggregated, and the data is right in front of you. The problem is you cannot store this amount of data. Neither can you calculate all of this data in real time, or maybe in a near, near real time, in maybe in seconds or minutes or hours, to be realistically you know, useful. So what do you do about it? And that's, that's where Killin does. It does, uh, applies these algorithms to make sure that you can keep these cuboids in, 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 in HBase and then query them and, then, and, then, and uh, aggregate them as like almost like snapshots, right? You, you query and then apply the merges and then you de and, uh, deliver your query results. Very simply, you have your data as a star schema already in Hive or in, or in or Hadoop. What we do, we allow you to define your cube structure using Kylin. So you define your cube structure, and then Kylin knows to translate that to a lot of MapReduce jobs, or it could be anything else, by the way. You know, we don't care about MapReduce. You could use Spark SQL as well, right? We can uh, uh, you know, plug in a different processor to create these cuboids, and then we sto store this in HBase, uh, Apache HBase. In fact, one of the things that we are thinking, and if there's interest, you can talk about that. Uh, what if this was more of a real-time database, right? And we have a few of those databases inside eBay. And then you can serve queries right in real time, right? We cannot have like billions of queries like, like the eBay.com use case on top of HBase today. So if we could just have these files you know, in a more real-time database, more online database, not real-time, online database, which more uh, uh, you know, scale out and, and resiliency, then we can use it for that as well. And probably we're going to go there at some point. And then on top of that, ANSI SQL, this is the only line, uh, the, the, the top line and the HBase line is what, at, at runtime, the, the Kalin engine you know, uh, uh, interacts with. It doesn't interact with the MapReduce and the Hive, you know, uh, the query builders at, 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 at when, it's, when you're executing SQLs. So let me just go over a few feature highlights. There are a lot of very, very interesting, cool features, and you know, this is very exciting. Um, and you know, I'll just talk to you about a couple of those. For example, we use approximate algorithms, hyperloglog. 
So we do not need to, for select star, we do not need to count all of them. We use approximate algorithms. Um, we use Apache Calcite, uh, and Julian Hyde's, uh, you know, that, that project was really, really, you know, very in instrumental in our uh, cost-based optimizer in, in Kylin. Uh, we have a very nice front-end UI as well, GUI that if you want to use to get started. Uh, very good job monitoring. You know, at eBay, you know, if we can build the queues, but if, if failures is imminent, how do you know what failed and how do you recover? So we build a lot of machinery behind this to make it really, really resilient for you to recognize, understand, triage, debug, and fix your problems. And we also use HBase Core Processor for reducing the query latency. So a lot of, lot of cool stuff, taking all of this, you know, advancements that have been happening in the Hadoop ecosystem and applying to a space where it was traditionally done only in the commercial vendors. And that is the beauty of Apache Kylin. You can today land your data in Hadoop and provide a seamless BI integration of your existing tools and, and un, un, unlock the value of that data that is hidden in, in Hadoop. So the, the first thing that you do is you define your data model. Start schema, very simple, you know, you say what's your joins that connects, the, you define your schema itself from there, and you, you, know, you define your dimensions. And, you, and those are different hierarchical category dimensions that you have. Uh, very easy to use for anybody from a design. You don't need to be a data engineer to do this. You understand different hierarchies, L1, L2, L3s. These are your met, and then you have, uh, then you define your functions as well, counts, sums, all of those, and, and boom, the cube is created. And you, we can show you in a nice visualization format as to how this cube is constructed as well. Once you define your uh, uh, data model in the query uh, cube builder, then you know, Kylin starts running the jobs. And you can schedule your jobs with the proper uh, schedule. And we also have nice ways of, like I talked about, talking about your job summaries, status. We have REST APIs to query all of those. So, so basically, very modern you know, architecture, simple, simplistic, modern architecture to define the cube, run the jobs, develop these cuboids in HBase, and then you know, we provide you a way to explore the data and query right on the UI as well if you don't want to use any other tools. Uh, and you, know, you can, uh, just like we had the Zeppelin today, uh, Kylin also provides simple visualizations that you can use, and maybe that's an area of improvement as well that we can provide more and more visualization in this UI. And you can sample your data, look at your data, to you know, be right there and say, do all your designing here. Uh, and finally, this is, I think, the most interesting part where the commercial world meets the open source world. Existing BI tools with Tableau, we provided a Kalin ODBC driver that you just plug in as another driver in Tableau. How many of you use Tableau? Okay, many of you, okay. So basically, then this Kalin provides you the data exploration engine of all the data in Hadoop. That's very neat. You, you, uh, you select the tables because those appear right as tables in your, in your, uh, in your uh, uh, Hive tables. And we are not, at query time, you do not even know your cube. So it, it's just like a materialized view underneath. So you're just treating this as a top level SQL on your Hive queries or anything like that. And just underneath understands the pre aggregates that have been already created and leverages that in real time. So you, it's, you connect live to Tableau because you cannot even import all the data, right? Most of your other solutions that you see in the market, you have to import the data and then do your dimension analytics on top of that. Here, you can, the data can right, be right there in the Keelin cubes, and you can explore live on the data sets that you ha have created. Uh, and just Tableau features work seamlessly with this. There is also, we, are you talk, gonna talk about the incremental updates? Yeah, okay. So with that, I'm gonna uh, hand it over to Luke to talk about uh, the technology highlights and then uh, and what are the things that we are working on. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> Welcome everyone to join this. Uh, my name is uh, Luke Han. I'm a product manager of uh, Kali in eBay and also the uh, PMC member. And that, yeah, now I will cover a uh, little bit about the uh, technical highlights and also introduce our roadmap. Okay, so which one? Yeah. Okay, let's uh, have a more, one step deeper about uh, the architecture. Yeah, so in the middle box, actually, there are all the uh, calling uh, components. So yeah, as uh, Devash mentioned, the data will persist in the uh, Hadoop Hive as uh, like a star schema, and we have the uh, metadata component to let the people to define the metadata and persist in our system. And once the metadata is ready, 
uh, we have another component called Cube Build Engine. It will read the metadata and automatically generate a, a bunch of steps, including like a Hive Query, uh, MapReduce jobs, um, edge based operations, which is to uh, generate all the uh, like, like calculated uh, the result, right? Do you remember the topology is about the, uh, the cube? is one layer, one layer, right? For this, it's actually calculated one by one. And then it's generated the H file and backlog into the H base. So this is, you could see, this is a red line. We call it offline data build process. Most of them actually are the last step of your ETL process, right? Once your uh, cube is ready, you can see, you, uh, and for any user, they could sub, uh, interact with Kylie through any like a circle based tool, like Tableau, for example, and also like a web, a web application and to submit NC circle to uh, Kali. And our query engine will pass it and to determine is that the data already in the cube or not. If yes, it will directly to call the uh, uh, HBase scan API to get the data directly from the HBase without any high uh, query, without any MapReduce job. That's why our query latency is so fast. Right. And yeah, by design, we wanted to routine the other unsupported query to any like a circle on Hadoop, like a Spark circle, like a drill, like something else, right? So yeah, this is, and a very important thing is here, the cube is totally transparent to the users. That means for end user, they only see is the hive metadata, still the same table and the column. And the only language they just need to, to use is just an circle, no cube for them, right? It's totally transparent. Okay. Then this is a, a metadata we have, right, for end user, as I mentioned. They only know the star schema from, the, from there. And in the middle, actually, this is the only way for people to, uh, to interact with for the, to, to create the metadata just to define the, fact, the uh, joint relationship, the dimensions, the measures. Dimensions already uh, show the features previous. And for the attributes storage, actually is already encoded just for the mean, right? Even for us, we cannot uh, know exactly. We need to, 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 to know the exactly value. This is for data modeling. And also once that, this is actually the uh, cube build job flow, right? You can see the first step is a hive query. We will submit the have query to then get the data back, right? Join all the all, all the uh, data, and then we will uh, run some like uh, uh, a demand, uh, quite some uh, 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 dictionaries and something else, right? Then to uh, run a lot of uh, 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 map reduce jobs to create an edge file, right? And then finally we will backlog into the edge base. Okay, this is for the job build process. And yeah, this, this we have a lot of uh, parts to optimize our machine later. And also, people are very uh, uh, interested about how we uh, store the data in HBase, right? Here is uh, actually the magic. A, so you can see on the left, there is actually the star schema in your data, of your data model. And you can see on the top, there's actually for the different uh, uh, group by, right? It's, uh, you can see that like group by D1 to DX, right? And you have some several uh, measures and also you, then you can calculate it to a different level, the different granularity, something like uh, the summary table, right? And uh, on, the, on, on the bottom of that, this actually is a low key and value in edge base. The low key is start, always start with a cuboid ID. The cuboid actually is one node about a diagram, right? One cuboid mean one uh, combination of uh, dimensions. And all the measures, the, the value is actually the aggregation result, right? If you have some, it will be some result on that. Okay, this is how we store the data in HBase. And so then another question is once we are stored the data in the HBase, how we can query it? So yeah, we are leveraging the Apache car site uh, to as our circle parser. And yeah, here is an example. This is a very, uh, a very, uh, uh, common uh, NC circle, right? It will join like uh, four tables with some uh, two where and a group by and also the uh, sum and the count, right? It's a very, very uh, common circle. And using CalSat, it will generate an XPD plan. I think here all, uh, all of you are know like the IMDBS, so this is very familiar for you. So you can see here is actually the different uh, uh, level, the plan. And here is the 
below the red line is actually will not to do on the runtime, right? For the like uh, the table scans or the join, this is already be covered in the cube build process. They already happen there, and so on top of the red, it will really to scan the edge base result and do some aggregation filter and projection, and then return the data back to the client. So this is how we query the data. Okay. And yes, I think you have a one question is about uh, the data expansion, right? For per calculation, this is a very, very common uh, question we have, right? So yeah, this is a curse of dimensionality, right? Once you have a more uh, dimensions, and even like one, one dimension has a very high cardinality, the re final result is really will be a nightmare, right? But we have some ideas, right? You can see, yeah, we call it like a full cube and a partial cube. We do not need to calculation all the possible combination. Because from a real case, what you, for one data model, it will have certainly have some query pattern for your business. Right? You do not need to query all the things. So this is a way, let me introduce it later. Okay. And also, we, we have a, a, other like a, a dictionary encoding to reduce the data, to convert like a dimension a string value like to the a digital value. Right. So that in the final result, the final storage, it will very, very small. And also we are supporting the incremental build, so we do not need to pull all the data every time. Right. Okay. So this is a very uh, important thing inside the carding. We call it a partial cube. Yeah, I do not cover all the things, but let me show you an example, like the, the bottom one. If you have like uh, uh, certain dimensions, if you, if you are calculating all the combinations, it will generate one billion cuboid. But if we can separate the dimension, right? For example, you just need, for, for your query pattern, you, most of the time you just need to group by these 10 dimensions. And for another case, you just need to group by another 10, right? So that we can separate it into like three groups. And in that case, it will to reduce the cuboid total member to 3,000. So this is what, what we happen, right, in, inside the killing. Because you do not, really do not need to, for all the combinations. Let, let me show more detail about this diagram, right. For all the uh, white box, it'll be calculated. And for the gray one, it'll not. So for example, once if you want to uh, query group by A and C, right, the, the, uh, our system do not calculate, uh, calculate it yet. So we will uh, look, looking for his parent. Is ACD and then run some uh, uh, runtime aggregation. Since the ACD is, uh, is reduced a lot from uh, com uh, compared to the ABCD, right? It it will more fast to get the data, and with some other uh, mechanical we have like a cache, it will be good for the when you run more and more time. Okay, so this is very important to optimize and also the incremental. Yeah, we, we cannot generate a very huge like uh, edge base table for that, right? It's uh, really uh, uh, not good to uh, manage that, right? So we separate them. Since most of the data have like the time dimension, so we can separate them by time, right? For the last year, most of the cases, the data will not be refreshed very frequently. So we can uh, separate this in the one edge table. It will be consistent there, right? And for more recent data, we will generate a more small one. It could be a refreshed like a daily. Even you can refresh back, like maybe one, for more months, right? Then with the time moving, we can merge the small one to the old, to, to the, um, old one. And then after this year, we can merge all of this year's cube to a one. So then we can manage this in, in that. And the important thing is for our circle, Engine, they do, it do not need to know how many, uh, we call it segment, we have. It, our query engine will pass that and to get the data from a different uh, segment, actually the edge table, edge table and uh, then merge all the results in the runtime. Okay. And yeah, for another thing is uh, very important is it, we, this is still a uh, MOLAP, and uh, yeah, we have a uh, lot of uh, challenge, right? We have to uh, improve. For example, right, we, how we can improve the cube algorithm. Because you know, for, for uh, our case, for our biggest case, it, for the fully uh, cube build, it will take like more than 10 hours to build the cube. It's still s slow, but think about it, this is uh, almost uh, more than like uh, uh, 20 billions 
it's, 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 it's uh, makes sense, but we still need to want it to be more sharp, right? So this way. And uh, yeah, also we want to do some streaming because you know, if you are, uh, if for us, if we are pull the data by the end of the day and run this, uh, this uh, cube build, it definitely will delay the data in like a one or two days, right? So we definitely want to, uh, the, the data can stream in and could be uh, streaming out and can be a uh, server query. And also, yeah, we would like to support, leverage some Spark I will cover later. Okay, yeah, this, this is uh, currently we have. So for each uh, dimension combination, we have a different uh, MapReduce job. Yeah, we have a bunch of uh, MapReduce job. But th I think you know that this is uh, definitely slow, right? We need to uh, uh, flush the data to this kind of reader in the next uh, MapReduce job, and there's a huge like network sh uh, shuffling. So you could see there's uh, like 100 x uh, beyond the total size, right? So we are trying to do a star cubing, and here is a new way. And this is almost done. And it, in our uh, in-house uh, in uh, testing with uh, like billions uh, uh, test data, it will could uh, reduce uh, half of the cube build process. And if we apply to the incremental build, it will certainly will be just like an hour, even like minutes can to do that. And also it reduced a lot of uh, network shuffling for that. So yeah, this is will coming soon. And also, yeah, for the streaming, right? So how we can do that? So we have uh, another architecture. Yeah, let me show that. We call this a Lambda architecture. You know, yeah, the, the data from streaming, it will put into the inverted index and just for a very short period in, the me in memory, keep it in the memory. And also there's another, another, low, another way to build the other data, like a while before, or even like a last, uh, yesterday's data, right? And uh, yeah, this, we keep this in memory and in edge base. And for, uh, we have uh, like a hybrid storage interface which can handle for this. And for our query engine, it still do not need to know that. Just pass the query to the hybrid storage engine interface. It will pick up the data from streaming and from the historical node. And then combine them and return to the client. So this is what we are developing now. Let me introduce a little about the load map. Okay. Yeah, and also, yeah, Spark is really hot, right? And yeah, we also see Spark is uh, have a lot of a benefit we can leverage. So here is some uh, idea we are talking about with uh, different uh, uh, partners about that. So the first is, yeah, the cube efficiency, right? MapReduce is, is good, but still not very efficient than like uh, Spark. So this is one way we are talking about how we can leverage Spark to build a Spark cube engine so that it can build a cube more efficiency. And also another thing is for Spark Circle. Current uh, today, we will submit the query to a Hive, and a Hive will run as a batch job, and it will it is still show up very slow, like right? uh, it will run like uh, several hours to prepare for the data, right? And it, we are we could see like a Spark Circle may can uh, uh, bring this uh, uh, things can to reduce such way, right? And also another thing is we also would like to routine the unsupported query to the Spark Circle. So that's through a, a Kylin query engine, we can help to support the most of the case for that. Yeah, there's a lot of way we want to leverage that. Okay, uh, let me cover a little bit about the load map. We are developing this uh, project uh, for on the, in the September of uh, 2013, uh, and we did a very quick POC, and then we are turned to uh, production last year, and uh, yeah, we are uh, put into the production, and the next day, we push the code out to open source, and in two months, uh, two, uh, less than uh, two months, uh, we are joined uh, Apache Incubating, so we are still uh, incubating now, and today, we are developing, we call it the streaming OLAP. We want to support the streaming case. We really have a very strong uh, business case there. And also we want to uh, support others, like the JDBC driver, like uh, even like uh, Excel or Spark Circle. And then we want to, yeah, to build the hybrid OLAP to can support all this uh, Lambda uh, architecture and for all other advanced features. And then we want to the next generation, right? We call us as uh, OLAP on Hadoop. So today we still have a lot of uh, OLAP functions waiting for us to implement, right? So this is uh, also another thing on our list want to do, yeah. 
Okay, so this is our evaluation roadmap, and we really would like uh, everyone can to join us to contribute uh, ideas, code, and uh, any others. Right. Uh, this is why we call it is uh, the ecosystem. We are be we are part of the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, around of us, we also would like to have an ecosystem. We can want to uh, integrate with like the BR2, right? We can we already can uh, work with our uh, Tableau, uh, with our own ODBC driver. But for uh, how about others? Why we, we are looking for the uh, partnership with the other vendors and even like open source one. And also we are, we are talking about like the drill and the Spark Circle integration, right? And also we want to do some uh, like extension. For example, like security, every company have a different security policy, right? How we can uh, uh, doing some pluggable uh, security, right, for this. Uh, Perform. And also like uh, the Docker, uh, thanks to uh, Sequence IQ, we actually have a Docker image already uh, exists available. So you can find it from uh, Docker, Docker Hub. And also for the interface, yeah, today we already see the uh, uh, Zeppelin, Apache Zeppelin, so it's like for some uh, like uh, interface and so you can interview, uh, interact with like uh, the backend data source. We also want to uh, do this like for all the others like Ambali Hue, something else. Right, so this is, and we actually we feel this is wanted to call the help right, from the community can to join us to bring the idea and to help on this. For example, from our community, we already, someone already shows the capability to using Pantaho to connect to, the, uh, to Kali. They resolved the, uh, resolved the issue and also submitted the patch last night. Yeah, so you can try it. Okay, so this is the last one we have. I always use this uh, diagram, this word. Yeah, we would like the people to join us. And uh, this one is uh, our uh, mailing list from Apache Incubator. So if you have any interesting, just send an email and subscribe this mailing list. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we have a few minutes for Q&A. Right. For any question? Yeah. Okay. If you can use one of these mics, please. Yeah, one mic. Uh, so, I think the first question which every, in everyone's mind is about MDX. Are you going to support MDX at some point? And uh, have you guys looked at issues resu uh, resulting for ragged hierarchies and when your hierarchies is uh, kind of sparse, what are, what are your opinions on uh, when your dimensionality is sparse and how are you going to deal with that in this architecture? So MDX you can take, I haven't read Oh yeah, for MDX, right. Actually, yeah, I just mentioned that we can work with Panaho. The way they are work is they are, uh, com uh, they are integrate the Panaho mandatory to a Kali. So through the mandatory, it can support MDX. Yeah, uh, but, naturally we, but naturally we do not support an MDX, yeah. And on the, on the hierarchy, the ragged hierarchy, you know, I think we do well, and I think there was a question somebody was asking me before this uh, thing. Uh, we do not do very good with extremely high cardinality. Right, uh, it will be like thousands or millions. You know, at thousands, I think it's fine. If you're millions of cardinality, you know, I think we we cannot. Uh, our our processing engine is uh, doesn't scale that well uh, for for the uh, response times. So, but hierarchies, you know, we can, we do pruning very well. It's very smart about pruning which keywords to keep and which not to keep. So, hierarchies, sparse hierarchies, pruning uh, those algorithms, uh, you know, we handle pretty well. Okay, just an uh, operation uh, question. Um, every day we get new data. Some data they just uh, insert, some data update, you know? And that is uh, very tricky. If uh, Hive does not support this, uh, you know, those uh, primary key kind of uh, replace into, how do you yep. handle that? Okay, I, I, I know your question. Okay, your asking is uh, how to handle like uh, the up insert, right? Yeah, actually Hive have some like a uh, snapshot they have, right? So you can uh, create some snapshot in Hive and keep the new data there. So it can work, right? And for the killing, we have a, we we can uh, we can support the upper insert uh, with some uh, like uh, setting. So for example, in our internal, internal uh, case, one of them they asking every day to refresh back like to a uh, certain this data because the data is will come in like in the for for the older data, right? So this way we we are totally refresh in this period and then keep the, keep the new data there and drop the older data. Yeah. So good news is, you know, since we you know, you know, do the merge and build the cuboids, 
and it's that's uh, at, at, at offline time, right? So we can be smart about what to build, what not to build, and transfer this in upsets, right, to different you know uh, changes in the cuboids and then them to the merge. Yeah. Okay. Which one? First one. Yeah. So um, building a cube can be a very intensive process, and especially if you're dealing with a lot of data. And if I use this with other components of, uh, let's say there are multiple applications using the Hadoop cluster. Is it yarn enabled by any chance, or is there any plan to look at it? Uh, so you, your question is, uh, yeah, the, for the Cuba build, it's very expensive, right? For the, and it, it utilizes the cluster actually very, uh, very, uh, very tough. Yeah, it, that's true. Yeah, when you are wanting to build a very huge cube, yes. But, so this is why we want to, first, is, uh, another thing is about incremental. If, if you can do the incremental build, it's just a piece of a, a data, right? It, it will not uh, generate too much of that. And also one thing we are doing is uh, like a streaming so that we can uh, distribute it for the calculation to like from like uh, one time per day to like uh, uh, one hour, right? So this we can uh, reduce the utilization. Yeah. But I think the question was, have we yarnized our application or not? Yeah, See, if the yeah. Hive queries are yarnized automatically, the queue building process is not, right? Not, not yet. So that would be something yeah. that we'd love to do. Uh, the other thing, you know, today we also have a talk called Node Labels. Uh, what we are uh, on Hadoop, we have contributed with Hortonworks. How can you create a you know, subset of nodes and do some particular work? I think that's a better model. In, you know, have a set of, set of nodes uh, specially designed to do the high crunching if you're constantly doing this. So that's one way, but you know we can get definitely get help in yarnizing our application. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, building cubes in general is a difficult problem. Uh, many cases, uh, you'd have a cluster, a couple hundred nodes, different teams using it. There's no central DBA who could sit and say, "This is my schema, this is my problem, and whatnot." So. In simpler models, cubes are great, but in a model where uh, lots of people are using it, people create their own kind of silo schema, silo tables, it becomes a very difficult and unmaintainable process. So my question is more along the lines of, uh, are there plans to build a smart system that would look at all the query expressions and say, this is, my, this is a repeated pattern, and use some kind of a cost model to say, if I build this, if I materialize this cube, these queries would speed up by X percent at a cost of this much, mm -hmm. And what about so? Yeah, you want to take that? Yeah, I, yeah. The question is uh, actually, I think uh, the question is about uh, yeah, can we build a more smart way to uh, analyze the uh, query history and can it automatically generate some cube for that, right? Yeah, this is uh, from beginning. Yeah, we we want to do that, but we find that this is uh, not an easy way to do actually. The the there's no so smart <laughs> robot yet, right? And uh, for our case, we, we just want to start it for like case by case first. And finally, we yeah, definitely we can do that using something we can uh, analyze all, the, all of this and we can know the hot data set, right? And then we can build the cube for this op on hot data set. So we, we are in discussion with Arun from Hortonworks and we have been you know, always noodling these ideas a little bit. You know, what if all queries, Hive queries have the metadata and other things, right, some signals go to a materialized view and the materialized view is always created smartly, right? right. Uh, there are no plans as of that, but this is where, you know, this is the community like the ecosystem. If that's something that interests you, you know, definitely we can work on that. But our real use case first was to say, you know, all the existing BI on really data, large sets of data that you cannot do BI on, let's first make sure that you can do BI on top of that. Thank you. Okay. That's, so, that's all the time we have. We have to rotate. We're okay. Into the okay. So, yeah. Thank you very Sorry, much. We can talk later. Thank you very much.